So in this video, we're going to describe how to compute the average rate of change of a function with Excel. And you might find this technique useful in problems where repeated computations are required. For example, some of the web assigned problems where you have to compute average rate of change or a slope of a secant line of some function, and you have to do this numerous times. Excel is perfect for these sorts of tedious, repetitive computations. So as an example, we're going to take some data from an in-class experiment. In this experiment, a ball is dropped. So we have, if you were in class, you may have seen this. We had a sensor here, and we take a ball, and we drop it, and we record how far it has fallen every 0.05 seconds until it hits the ground somewhere down here. Right. So these measurements are recorded in this table. On the left, you have the time at which the measurement was taken, and on the right, the position of the ball relative to the sensor. So if you wanted to, for example, compute the average velocity from 0 to 0.3 seconds, right, this is going to be a change in position over a change in time over this interval. So from the table of data, we can see that, well, the denominator is going to be the change in time. And in the numerator, we would want to take the position after 0.3 seconds and subtract from that the position at time 0. So in this case, 1.03 minus 0.14. And the units for the outcome would be meters per second. So doing this once by hand is not so bad, but if we wanted to compute the average velocity from time 0 to 0 0.05, and then from 0 0.05 to 0 0.1, Excel provides a quicker alternative to doing this. Here's an example of a typical Excel spreadsheet which contains the data from the previous exercise. And what we're going to do here is we're going to compute the average rates of change of the velocity of the ball over each subsequent time interval, so from 0 to 0 0.05, from 0.05 to 0.1, etc. This would be tedious to do by hand, and Excel makes this easy though because Excel uses relative cell references in order to perform its computations. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's say we click on the cell here in column C and row three of our spreadsheet. Now, if I want to use this cell to compute the average velocity of the ball from time zero to 0.05, then we can use references to the cells containing the positions of the ball at the end point and the beginning point of the interval of interest. Divide that by the difference in times, which I have in my Excel spreadsheet in A3 and A2, and Excel will perform that computation for me. Now, notice that if I want to perform the same computation, but over the interval 0.05 to 0.1, then I can basically use the same formula, but I just need to increase the row numbers by one for each cell in my formula. And Excel will do this automatically for you. If you scroll over the lower right hand corner of a cell, you'll notice the cursor will shift from a larger white cross to a smaller black one. And if you hold down with the left mountain but mouse button on the right-hand corner of that cell, you can drag its content down as far as you want, really. But in our case, we just want to go down to the end, to the last time here. And what Excel will do is it will automatically update the cell references and the formulas. So notice that as I scroll down here, the cell references are all increasing by one, and hence it will automatically compute for me this average velocity over each subsequent time interval.